welcome to this week's Sam versus Lee. Now, if you remember, just before game week 21, it was 4-1 to me. Not looking good, was it? Look, you needed to pull something out of the bag, I'm not going to lie. Needed a decent week. Do you want to see how you got on? Do you know what? In actual FPL, my, my arrows have been fairly green throughout Christmas, so... If only I could... I'm never going to catch up where you are in, in actual FPL, but if I could just get... If I could claw it back to 4-2, 4-3, I'd feel generally a bit happier about life. Yeah, so go <laughs> on, go on. Tell us how I got on. Okay, so last week, if you remember, we had um, new manager teams as new, our... Yes, okay, yeah. Um, as our theme. So teams that had had a new manager since the season had started. So... So which teams were they? They were like Arsenal, Spurs... West Ham, Everton West Ham. and Watford. Watford. So you had four, five teams um, that you okay. could have chosen from. All right. So you decided to break all of the rules and I let you because you were losing Oh, I had uh, Fabianski, badly. didn't I? Yeah. And you had Fabianski yeah. oh, who right. kept a nice clean sheet for yeah. you. Happy days. Well um, done, Fab. So six points. More than your whole team last week. So, you know, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. Um, and then you had Saar in the middle for Watford. Um, he did all right. Yeah, got five points. Yes, got this is looking good. Um, okay. And then you decided to steal Harry Kane from me. Oh, yeah. Jinxed him and got him injured, I might add. So the week I pick Harry Kane for Sam versus Lee, pulls a hammy. I mean, I'm not going to say it was your fault, but it's your fault. Could have had that gold as well if it wasn't for VAR. So he got you two. Okay. Um, so you ended up with 13 for the week, which actually is a, is a really decent score. I'll take that. I think that's score. all right. Yeah, yeah, really if decent. you can beat that, fair play. I think I've done all right there. Well, so my team. Um, I had Foster, who lost his clean sheet to a Neto goal. Always like Neto. Um, Always like him. Good player. <laughs> so he got nice two. Nice player. Um, I had Deli Alley in the middle, who did absolutely nothing and also got two. Never liked him. It's good. <laughs> And then Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who actually did even worse than the other two and got one. So I ended up on five, which was... So I'll get the point. ...pretty much diabolical. Yes. So you Excellent. claw one back, and it's now 4-2. Nice. Hashtag Team Lee. I mean, you're still struggling, but... The comeback is on. Come on, the comeback okay. is on. The comeback... There's people in the comments of the last video saying, come on, Lee. Hashtag Team Lee. You can... Don't get beat 13-1, <laughs> they were saying. <laughs> so... I would love it if you got beat 13 -1. Well, it's not going to be 13 1 now. 13 2 now, at least. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, so I'll give you that one. To be fair, your picks actually did come off that week, so decent picks. Always like Saar. I like Saar. He's a nice pick, isn't he? 0.8% in FPL. Nice differential. Yeah. Pearson with the new manager bounce. Deeney coming back. It's all coming together for him. I like Neto as well, despite last game week, him not coming in for you. The fact that Diego Yotta might be injured. I think he got maybe got injured in the FA Cup. Let's keep an, keep an eye out on, on how that mm. pans out. But if Yotta is injured, that might mean more game time for Neto. He's a young player, 19, but... Yeah, I don't like him. He took, cost me my clean sheet, so, you know. <laughs> Trying to give some <laughs> FPL insight here. Our position in FPL, cheap, 5.5. Yeah, Have a look at him. Don't disagree. That's all I'm saying. Don't just write him off because he didn't come in for you in San Francisco. Well, no, he took, he took my clean sheet away from Foster, didn't he? So, you know, very annoying. I'm very but gracious anyway. when I lose these points in San Francisco. I've noticed. I just said that your picks were good. You're not very great. <laughs> Go on then. So what's going on this week? Okay, so this week, um, we're going to change it up a little bit. So for the last few weeks, we've had um, a small pool of clubs that we can choose from. There's yeah. been sort of five teams that we've kind of had the choice between. So I've decided let's widen the bracket of teams that we can pick from this week. I've just noticed, by the way, in all these videos, you make up, you make in the rules every week. Okay. I should have some sort of like golf handicap. I should be like 10 under par to start with, <laughs> just to start with, shouldn't I? Okay, I'll tell you what. I've done this week's one and we've made our pick. So you can pick next week's theme. All right. How okay. about that? Yeah, okay. Well, that sounds okay, right. Go on then. What's this week's theme? All right. So this week's theme are the 10 most northerly clubs in the Premier oh, League. Oh, loads to pick from. Well, 10. Yeah, because it's the 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean like City, <laughs> Liverpool, United. Yeah. So it's, right? it's, it's a nice, uh, I think... My concern was that I wanted us to just broaden our horizons a bit so that we weren't picking right. necessarily from the same pool of players. Loads all to the pick time. from it. Go on then. So we have got obviously Newcastle as the most northerly. Not same. sure I'm picking too many there, but yes, okay. Burnley. Ditto. The yeah. two Manchester clubs, City yeah. and United. Yeah. Sheffield United. Oh, okay. The two Merseyside clubs, Everton and Liverpool. Very good. Leicester, Norwich, and Wolves. Wolves. 
Wolves is more northern than yeah, is more northern than Aston Villa. Just isn't just, it? it's very close. But Villa are the next one. Villa are next. Villa. Yes. So, so, so Villa Wolves, count okay. as a southern. So when we do our ten most southerly clubs, we'll hit Villa. Norwich which is further strange. north than Wolverhampton. Yeah, it is just very strange. My geography is terrible. My okay, geography so... is, as you well know, my geography is yeah, appalling. Yeah. Sat now, sat like cool. Took know. me a very very long time to work out who the most ten. Northern so go on then, were. ten most northern clubs. Who's your defender? Who are you picking in defence? Okay, so I am actually going to go to Merseyside. But of course. not necessarily the Merseyside team that you would have thought. Oh, okay. So I'm going to go Everton okay. um, and pick on Holgate um, this week. Oh, so okay. hasn't had a clean sheet in the last two, but did get back-to-back clean sheets in 18 and 19. Mm-hmm. Um, did nearly score against you a lot in the FA Cup this week, was it not for a, an Everton? Um, Straight down the throat Adrian of Adrian, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Save, yeah. yeah. Um, That's a theme, by the way. I've noticed him in recent weeks... Um, just being in and around the corners. He can head a ball, Mason Holgate, no doubt about it. And whoever's taking the corner, either Sigurdsson or Dina, they do tend to look for him a little bit. And he has got into some some decent positions. Yeah, and the, and the set pieces at Everton are, the players that are on them are decent, you know, yeah. put in a decent ball. So I think that there is good potential there for some FPL returns um, for him this week. Okay. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily going to say he's going to get me an absolute hat fall and get on a double digit haul but there's potential that there might be some attacking returns from one of those set pieces home to Brighton as well the fixture in game week 22 looks okay I think yeah and I think clean sheet potentially there as well in that one Brighton are quite hit and miss obviously went out of the cup this yeah. weekend um, have had some mixed bag over Christmas I think is the best way to put Brighton's um, performances so yeah, yeah. yeah I think there's clean sheet potential and potential for attacking returns okay. what about you Who's Very your good. Defender well you've put um, you've put Sheffield in the 10 most northern teams. So yes. I'm going to go for uh, the man, um, John Lundstrom. Of course, of course I'm going for John Lundstrom. I think if, if you're going to put Sheffield United in there, um, in a nice fixture at home to West Ham. Now, I appreciate since David Moyes, it's the second coming of David Moyes <laughs> at West Ham, um, they've looked a little bit better. Um, and I know in the FA Cup, they, um, I mean, we're recording this as the Gillingham game is going on, actually. So I don't know the final score, but I think last we checked, there was maybe a couple of goals up, and I think it might have even finished 2-0. So that's now back-to-back clean sheets in all competitions for West Ham. And one of the things that I think Moyes will be will have a remit to do is to tighten up that defence. He will be looking for them to concede far fewer goals. Mm. Now, if they can if they can get more by getting more, more at four nows, and if Lanzini can come back from injury and be more creative, then fair enough. Anderson, I think, got his first goal of the season at the weekend in the FA Cup. So... They're starting to be a bit more fluid in attack as well, especially since they bought, beat Bournemouth in the last game week. But nevertheless, I still feel like the remit for West Ham, particularly away from home for the rest of the season, is let's not get beat. Let's play conservatively. reasonably conservatively and defensively. Okay. And I think because of that, I don't see them scoring a hat full of goals at Sheffield United. Now, that's an easy. That's also an easy statement to make because not a lot of teams go to Sheffield United no. and score a lot of goals because they are very, very good at home, Sheffield United. And if you look at John Lundstrom's big hauls, they have tended to come at home. So 14 points against Crystal Palace in game week two, all the way back in game week two, mm. when he exploded onto the FPL scene. Um, and then 21 points, obviously, famously against Burnley in game week 11. And then 11 points more recently against Villa in game week 17. Now, he has got some decent hauls away from home as well. Um, but tends to get the bigger hauls at home because, of course, Sheffield United better at home. Mm. So he gets the four kind of bonus points for having a clean sheet as well. Um, so I do think that uh, that Sheffield United have got a nice fixture at home to West Ham. I think West Ham will set up a bit more defensively um, and won't kind of go for the game. So I see I can see points at both ends for Lindstrom. Now, he's actually gone sort of two or three games without scoring many FPL points. There's a few people in the FPL community starting to doubt the Lord, would you believe? Starting to doubt. <laughs> Lord Lundstrom, which is absolutely insane for me. So it's the Friday night kickoff, home to West Ham. It's going to be on TV, under the lights, etc., etc. I'm going to go for Lundstrom. Yeah. Because why the hell not? The guy's an FPL legend. I mean, yeah. Yeah? Uh, yeah. All right. And I'm going to move into midfield, go since on. you asked. And I'll move into... Who uh, <laughs> have you got for a midfield? Well, the, uh, the most southerly team, Wolves... Um, have been playing pretty well not least Mr Adama Traore 16.3% team quite selected cheap, by quite cheap aren't they they're quite cheap but that's how I like to play Sam versus Lee I like to come at, I like don't like to pick you know I guess I don't like to pick Kane I picked Kane last week <laughs> I don't like to pick like Kane, Salah and Van Dijk I'll, you know I like to pick 
come up with a few differentials. What? Lindstrom's um, not really good differential. Differentials like 50% <laughs> own. You know what I mean. I like to come out with the cheaper alternatives. Let's you are going, you're, you're, you're budget friendly. Lindstrom's never been a differential. 16.3% um, <laughs> team selected by Adama Traore. Now, for me, this guy is one of the most improved, if not the most improved player this season. His, he, yeah. his end product, particularly in the final third has looked way better. And I think the players around him, like the Yotters and particularly the Jimenezes, yeah. and Matt Doherty actually behind him, have all learnt his game a bit more. They've all learnt a bit more how to play with Adama Traore. Like Raul Jimenez, you can see him sort of pointing and shouting and telling Adama Traore where he wants the ball. And nine times out of ten, Traore is delivering that ball now because he's being told, I want it there. And he's getting used to them and vice versa. Um, he went past his... This is a nice stat that I found on Twitter. He went past his man... 15 times versus Watford in game week 21. Now, that's they lost the game, right? So that stat really counts for nothing in the end. But the reason I picked it out was because since Opta Records began back in 2006 and 7, that's the most a Premier League player has ever gone past his man since Premier League stats records began. So that wow. tells you everything you need to know about Adama Traore's game. Confident, direct, um, bullies those defenders at fullback. And now he's got a bit of end product as well. So I do like him, 16.3%. Um, home to Newcastle. We know Newcastle don't travel very well either. So I do think points are there for Jimenez. I do think points are there for Traore. I do fancy players like Doherty as well. I think Wolves will get back to winning ways after a couple of difficult games. So really upped his game this year. Um, and if you look at his last two home games, 13 points against City in that famous 3-2 win. Um, and then 10 points against Spurs in what was actually quite an unlucky defeat. They potentially could have got something out of that game. Mm. So the last two home games looking good as well. So form and fixture, Adama Traore. Fair enough. Okay, I am going to go a bit further north. All right. Um, up to Manchester. But again, not the Manchester team that you would anticipate. All right. I would. So I'm going to go with Manchester United. Ooh, okay. Rather than Manchester City. And in fact... Man United I'm... midfielder. Yes. Martial. Martial. Um, oh, that's a risky so pick. So, out of position... He's been ill this week. ...in the game. Go on, okay. Playing as a forward, but marked as a mid in the game. So, obviously, yeah. a clean sheet bonus point is there if, if they can ever get one. Um, yes, you are right in that he missed the FA Cup because he was ill. I now, think this is a risky pick. You know what Martial's like? He's, he'll have a couple of really good games, like he has done recently, and mm. then he'll just be ill or have like a calf strain or something and it just won't be just won't be on the bus maybe i mean he had a he had an off game in game week 21 um where he didn't get anything against arsenal when they lost um obviously then missed the fa cup game against wolves this weekend through yep. illness yeah, yeah. and prior to that he got 18 20 and 15 points in game week 19 so a couple of nice returns yeah, yeah, it's, there. it's been reasonable form yeah now it is a risk because we don't yet know if he's going to be recovered from this illness. We don't really know yeah. what this illness is and whether he'll be returning, able to play on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. But the fixture's nice against Norwich, who can't defend. So That's true. They're pretty leaky, Norwich, yeah. yeah. There is definitely goals in that game for Manchester United. Um, and... I think, you know, if Pookie doesn't play, there's potential for a clean sheet there for Manchester United as well, which is why I've gone with Martial over Rashford because there's that clean sheet opportunity for him yeah, as yeah, a midfielder. Okay. Yeah. Um, I also think that if Martial does do something, and I know what you're saying about him, but if he does do something, they tend to be good hauls that he gets. They tend yeah, to yeah. be double digits. So it's either double digits or nothing, okay. it appears. You know, he got a double digit haul, as I talked about, in game week 19, explosive, isn't it? in yeah. 16 yeah. and in 12. So it's kind of like okay. every few weeks he gets some something big. So I'm hoping for something big yeah, well, from you know, an illness-free well, Martial. And do you know what? I think it's it, this is the point in the video where we all say, well, yeah, but United at home to a lower level side, they can't play against the low block, they prefer the counter-attack. All true statements. Norwich, it, that's not really their game, no. is it, Norwich? They don't really... I'm not sure they know how to play a low block. They are far more... They're one of the more attacking sides that are down there. And I think they'll go yeah. to Old Trafford. And if they do go to Old Trafford and stick by their attacking principles... Which I think they have to, because I don't think they know how to play other way. It's kind of how they play. Yeah. Um, that could play into the hands of, of Martial and Rashford, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's where I'm going. Very good. All right. Well, I'm going to go up top. I'm going to Liverpool and I'm going to Roberto Firmino. Oh hello! Um, this is where you've spent your. This is where your money has gone. Then is this it? This is where not, the money's not gone. That we have a budget, but you've gone no. two cheeks, and now 
Two splashed cheeks. out a little bit. Splashed out up top for Roberto Firmino. Um, he was third for XG underachievers in game week 21, according to the Fantasy Football Scout members area. So any of you guys that are members on Fantasy Football Scout, go check out the XG underachievers. Now, what does that mean in plain English? That means that he was probably a bit unlucky to not get something in game week 21. He had an X XG of 0.78. So that suggests that he could reasonably have expected him to get a goal. So that means he's getting in all the right positions. Um, Liverpool played very well against Sheffield United and he was obviously pretty instrumental as he tends to be mm. when Liverpool win. Um, you're not going to like this. But one no, of the main, he's playing Spurs. One of the main reasons I've picked him is because of the opposition. Oh, great. I just think... <laughs> just genuinely, <laughs> uh, I genuinely think that Spurs, not just defensively, but as a, as a team, are in a bit of disarray at the minute. I think... Liverpool going there on a Saturday evening. The whole of the Spurs team and all of the fan base have got all of Saturday to worry about that game. I honestly think that is a tough, tough game for Spurs. Now, Spurs played a full-strength team in the FA Cup against Middlesbrough, only got a point. So again, didn't look that great. Uh, some of the players, I think Dele Alli looks knackered, to be honest with you. Christian Eriksen looks like he, he just did not want to play against Middlesbrough, no doubt about it. Um, he's thinking about Madrid and the sunshine, isn't he? That's, think, that's, that's I think, a fact. Um, but Liverpool actually, of course, played more or less a youth stroke B team against Everton and went through 1-0 with a very commanding performance. So that's the momentum in the camp, the good feeling about the camp, plus all of those, de you know, all of the, not decent players, but all the first teamers, your Manes, your Salas and your Bobby Firmino's have all had a rest in the FA Cup. So they've had a, a few more days to contemplate and to train for the Spurs game. So I'm going to go Bobby Firmino. Um, last four game weeks, he's only made three appearances in the last four game weeks because, of course, Liverpool blanked in game week 18 but despite that he's right up there with the leaders for attempts and attempts in the box 11 attempts nine in the box only two behind the leader abraham who of course does have those four appearances so i think abraham's got 11 attempts in the box and firmino nine so i think jesus is up there with some really nice stats as well so abraham jesus firmino they're all up there and you know he's played one game less firmino so had he played the same amount of games as these guys he'd probably be right at the top of the members area mm. tables um I'm also, you know, if, if you were thinking, and this obviously this video is not necessarily for looking forward at all to double game week 24, but if you are starting to plan for double game week 24, Firmino is still under 10% owned. So he comes in at a bit of a differential for that as well. When we're all thinking about Trent, Robbo, Salah and Mane, mm. just an outside thought, just scout Firmino for the next couple of games against Spurs at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and then at Anfield against Old Trafford. If he can put in a couple of nice performances, he should be on your radar for double game week 24. So Roberto Firmino as... Yeah, that's where I'm spending the money in my Lee versus Sam this week. What about you? Sorry, Which forward are you going for? I'm not sure about Firmino. I, I, I think he's a fantastic player. I just feel like you might be frustrated having him because he might just assist the assists of the goals that Mane and Salah could be. Yes, are going to score. Be. Could be. Um, no, it's really strange, isn't it, that we would do a northerly team, Sam versus Lee, and neither of us have picked any Manchester City players because I'm not going there either for my forward. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I'm surprised at this because not we don't normally have the opportunity to pick Manchester United players. Yeah. But when we have, we've ignored them. Man City players, Man, you mean? Man City yeah, players, yeah. we've ignored them. Okay. It's strange. So who are you going for? So I'm going for Jimenez. Um, now you mentioned yeah, okay. Jimenez earlier um, when you were talking about Traore. And I think, you know, he is... He's been really steady, I think is the Very best way consistent. to describe him Very this season. Yeah. Haven't necessarily seen the explosive FPL godlike stuff of last season from him no. yet. Mm. Um, but I also feel like, you know, he he wasn't picked to start the FA Cup game this weekend. All right, he did come on um, due to the illness of the other player at half time in the... In he got 45 the minutes, didn't he? 45 yeah. minutes. So he's had a little bit of a recovery time, more so than, than some of his teammates. Um, he has had returns in four of the last six matches that he's played in in the Premier League. Now, OK, the last two matches were the two that he didn't return in, but yeah. they were tougher matches and Wolves just weren't quite on their game in those. Okay. I think we had some bounce back from Watford and, and, and the like. Um, so I would expect some be be better things from him in the next couple. Plus the other game that he didn't um, return in was the Liverpool game where he only played 18 minutes anyway. Okay. So yeah. it's a bit tough to judge him on the last two, but if we look back over the last six, prior to, or the last four prior to those two, he's got attacking returns. So... For me, I just think that Jimenez could absolutely... This is the sort of game where he could do really, really well. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, for me, 
it's Jimenez. Yeah, keep an eye on the uh, the yotta industry very much. The yotta in injury mm. um, that I you know I haven't seen anything concrete yet from Nuno Espirito Santo to say whether he's injured or not. But he's very much Jimenez's partner in crime, isn't he yes. up there? Um, I think last season it was certainly those two. Although this year there's more ammunition coming into Jimenez actually from the likes of. Doherty and Traore and, and even Neto if Neto plays and Moutinho and of course Moutinho yeah who um, delivers an absolutely wicked free kick so I like it I like Jimenez so we've gone for two Wolves players so we're, yes. we're back in we're obviously back in Wolves at home to uh, Newcastle right yeah so Lundstrom, Traore and Firmino Lundstrom, Traore and Firmino for me Holgate, Martial and Jimenez for me interesting quite varied and quite different and not actually what I was expecting you to do. I think this week is largely going to um, it's going to hinge on whether Martial can turn up for that game. I think Martial is the risky one actually. Because we've had, leaving Lundstrom Could have had a Man City aside, midfielder. Well this is the thing so leaving Lundstrom aside <laughs> we picked the kind of not obvious players so alright I think Jimenez is potentially in the obvious player bracket but less so this season than he was last but Martial's not the obvious Manchester United player it's probably Rashford um, Traore is not the obvious Wolves player necessarily but that'd be boring if we it'd be boring if we did a Sam versus Lee a fancy yeah. football scout and we pick all the obvious players Firmino so is on, definitely not the on. obvious Liverpool there, player right? so yeah. they are a little bit out there and they are yeah they're a bit different there we go like alright guys well listen that is Sam versus Lee for another uh, for another game week get in the comments below let us know if you think it's hashtag team Lee or hashtag team Sam for the win this game week to remind you of the scores it's now 4-2 to you 4-2 so do you think it's going to be 5-2 do you think it's going to be 4-3 get in the comments below let us know uh, thanks for joining us for another Lee and Sam are here on Fantasy Football Scout uh, we'll see you this time next week where we will go through I guess the Southern teams that we're going to well, do next you're week. going to pick because you moan <laughs> it makes so sense to do the Southern teams you're going to pick but I, it kind of does make sense to do Southern teams well there we go so leave us a like before you go hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and we'll see you next week for the topic that I'll choose cheers guys bye